Hello folks, Stone Dog here, and you know, a lot of people, um, they try to say that Charles Darwin was a racist, and, um, the only example they give of this is the title of his, the full title of his book, which is The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or The Preservation of Favored Races and the Struggle for Life. Well, they interpret the last part, the preservation of favored races, to be a racist statement. Now, I will agree that it is a racial statement, but not a racist statement. And anyone who's actually read the book should probably have figured this out. Now, some of you may not really understand what the difference between a racial and a racist statement is. Well, if, let me clarify that in case you don't. If I say, I have a black friend... That's a racial statement. That's stating a fact about the fact that there are different races out there and my friend happens to be one of them. As opposed to if I say all black people are lower than white people, that would be a racist statement. Now, on, on the head of it, if you just kind of look at it, the preservation of favored races, you, what the Christians are trying to say is what he meant that white people are always favored over black people and that's how come he was racist now maybe Charles Darwin was a racist but I doubt he was any more of a racist than he was for his time almost everybody there in the time he grew up were pretty much were racist and that's what he would have been taught but I, I would suspect he was definitely less racist than what most people try to make him out to be now the reason I say this is because I've read The Origin of Species and I understand what the preservation of favored races means. And it's not really racist, it's racial. And it sort of comes along the same lines, and I'll get to this a little later, about the fact that when creationists are asking you for favorable mutations, they're really asking for something that's kind of hard to discern in exactly, because usually any time you give them an example of it, well, let's say, well, in some cases that's not good, or, you know, well, it did something else that's not good. Well, you don't understand evolution if you think that, because we have given you examples of favorable mutations, and you just say, well they're not favorable all the time and that just proves you don't know anything about evolution just the same way and in the same light that you say the preservation of favorable races is racist now let, let me get down to exactly what I'm talking about here in some situations the black race or the Mexican or the Hispanic or the Asian it doesn't matter in certain circumstances, in certain environments, those races are favored other, uh, over other ones. And that's what Charles Darwin was basically trying to say. In a situation where you have a lot of sunlight beating down on you all the time, obviously the lighter the skin you are, the, better, the more likely you are to get sunburned. Well, if you're really horribly sunburned, it's going to be very hard for you to go out hunting. Is it not? Well, of course it is. I mean, a lot of people and that are watching this have probably gotten pretty bad sunburns. I mean, imagine you trying to hunt for something to keep you alive with that. Well, black people don't have that much of a problem with that. I mean, so it's easier for them to go out and hunt in places where a lot of sunlight is. And thus, the black pigment in the skin is a favored trait over lighter pigment in the skin. And in a situation, kind of maybe some place where it's, there's not a lot of sunlight and, or you, you have to wear a lot of clothes because it's cold, so you're not getting as much sunlight, well, you you need at least some sun getting onto your skin to create vitamin D. That's something that's necessary. And so in a situation like that, a lighter pigment would be favored over a darker one. And this is what Charles Darwin was trying to say. In a similar light, that's the same thing with favorable mutations. They're only favorable in certain situations, obviously, in not all situations, which is why most mutations appear to be neutral. 
because most mutations don't have an effect on the in particular environment those things find themselves in. It's, it's hard to discern, well, it's neutral now. Well, we don't really understand mutations enough and what their effects are, overall are going to be on the organism to make a very viable guess as to how that these um, mutations are going to be favorable and what conditions they will be. The only way we can tell a favorable mutation generally is in an environment where that mutation is indeed favorable. Otherwise, it just seems neutral to us, and of course is neutral in that environment. Now, if you place that same organism with the same mutation in a different environment, that mutation may become favorable to that organism, and thus that favorable mutation will now spread among the population of this new area. And that's basically what Charles Darwin was meant by the preservation of favored races is that depending on the environment certain races certain traits would be favored over other ones while in other situations those same traits may be non-favored not, or not even just neutral they could be neutral it depends if you're ever wanting, wondering what effect a new environment will have on an organism you have to ask well okay here's a trait Will this trait be an advantage or a disadvantage or a neutrality in this new environment? And that's where a lot of creationists get a lot of things wrong. And again, the main reason I'm making this is because a lot of creationists like to make the claim that Charles Darwin was indeed a racist because of no other reason than the statement, and I'm trying to defend that statement. This is obviously not a racist statement. And I hope I've given everybody a little insight onto why that is. Because a lot of creationists don't seem to understand that. Because I've gotten heard that a lot from creationists. Anyway, that should be about.